20 plus years, at some point, you realized you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Hey, Ernie, so I just wanted to jump on really quickly and let you know how much I appreciate you. This morning's consultation went very, very well. The way that you explained my personality type, which is the C, was very informative. It was super straightforward. You were able to lay out everything so that I can understand your, t- your tone of voice, your style. Everything was very calming. You're a super easy guy to talk to, and I'm excited to see where my personal and my professional life is going to go after today's consultation. So once again, Ernie, I appreciate you so much, and I cannot wait to see where we're headed. Okay, welcome to episode 129 of the Married Into Crazy podcast with Snooks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. I'm Snooks. And we have a special treat for everyone. We're going to be closing out this month, which is Black History Month. We're in February 2, was it 2021? 2021. 2021. Yes. And so as everyone in the world knows, it's been a crazy, crazy prior year. We're going to start calling that the year that shall not be mentioned. We won't even talk about 2020 anymore. <laughs> but what we want to do is this particular month, our dedication from Married into Crazy for Black History Month is we're doing the series Black Excellence in Marriage. Mm-hmm. And so we thought there was no better way to close out the series than with a, a, a group of couples that we spoke to at the very beginning of the pandemic last year. You remember that? In the summertime, I think. Wasn't yeah. It? We had been in it about several months. So without yeah. further ado, what we want to do is go ahead and let you know that who we have on the screen, we have Derek and Aisha Taylor. They're okay, they're waving, <laughs> but so those of you do calm wave. <laughs> we also have uh, Monte and Erica McDaniel. Hello. Hello. Wait, we got voices there. And we also have Kara Haynes, hold it down for the Haynes clan. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) And so what we're going to do is just talk about just Black excellence in marriage. And like I've said multiple times throughout the month, Black history is American history. And what people forget is that it's not about singling out Black history. It's letting everybody and reminding everyone that Black history is a part of American history. You can't study one without knowing the other and truly call yourself an expert or somebody that, that's an aficionado of history. Same thing applies to marriage. We're focusing on black excellence in marriage and black excellence in marriage means that there's excellence in marriage at large as well. But I think it's special when we get to talk about this within a particular subset because the media, television, music has a tendency to portray as if we're all unicorns on this particular stage and we don't exist. Right, it's important that people see the excellence that is in marriage, in black marriage, especially because like Lovey was saying, um, we are not all divorcees. And if you are divorced, okay, that's cool too. But there are people who have made their love last and they work hard at it. And we are excellent at our hard work that we have to do. Can I say amen? amen? Can my sister say amen? Because I know. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, no. Brothers, can I get an amen? Because what? Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Whatever. Amen for Mr. Hayes in his, in his absence as well. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Because you do it down a vote. <laughs> That's funny. So be, what, before we get started, so um, like Levy said, we're we want to kind of just touch back up with the couples that we talked to in the summer during the pandemic, our COVID series. And it's, um, it, it, for some people it was very hard being married during COVID, you know, some had the 24 hour interaction and, or others were more separated. So what, um, I just want to throw this out there. What has changed for you all since we first talked? For us? For well, any- so you, yeah, go ahead and get started. For the Taylor household, a lot's changed. We have even more time together, which we're very grateful for. So the pandemic has really given us a lot of love and grace during this hard time and allowed us to restructure our life so that we live basically life on our own terms. And um, we spend 
a lot of unlimited time together, which is something we've wanted for a long time. That's awesome. That's beautiful. And, and you know, I want to get into that a little bit later as well, because I want to give each of you a platform to really plug what you're doing, how you're doing it, and how our listeners can really assist and continue to build up your platforms and what you're doing as well and uh, contribute to your passions. Um, what about you, Mr. and Mrs. McDaniel? Has anything changed since the beginning of the pandemic, the last time we spoke? Much. Um, <laughs> I'm essential worker, so I've been working since the pandemic. Uh, my wife works uh, from home, so um, she's been doing that even prior to the pandemic. Um, she had a flexible schedule, so um, we've been able to adapt pretty well. Okay. And um, for us, I mean, other than the obvious of one not being here, but um, we are used to having a down period. My husband and we mentioned he plays professional basketball overseas. So we're used to having downtime in the summer. And it usually is three months. We agreed early on in our marriage not to go longer than three months without connecting and seeing each other and having our family together. We also have a seven-year-old son. So with that being said, this has been the longest period of time that we've spent together, probably since college. And it was an adjustment. Um, my husband, he joked and was like, I don't know where the kitchen towels are. I don't know where anything is in this house, you know, and, and where I'm used to, to having a schedule. You know, we, me and our son, we have a set schedule. You just gonna have to get in when you can get in. And uh, he adjusted just fine, but it was, it was an adjustment period. We, we made it out. We've come back, you know, and I know we'll dive into what we're into right now, but things are, are just fine. And we really are appreciative of having that time together. I mean, it's been over 10 years of just being around each other that long and we didn't realize how much we needed it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he was saying that 2020 would be the year of uh, that we won't mention, but for you all, it seems like that was a um, a year of rebirth almost because yeah. you were able to reconnect on levels that you had not connected on. 10 years of back and forth, him, him being out of town, you being here. So now you all were uh, in the same home at the same time for over extended amount of time. And you still smile and you still love each other. That's great, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And, and it was, I mean, we're both very strong headed people too. So it really was an adjustment. I'm not gonna lie. That first month was like, oh my gosh. But <laughs> after a while, you know, you for better or worse. And that's my soulmate. That's my best friend. And I know he would say the same thing, but it was an adjustment. It really was, but it, I wouldn't have traded it for the world. That's awesome. And that's what it's about. That's why we're coming together today, because I think this is an opportunity for not just Snooks and Levy and not just for you know, individuals that we, we bring on. I think it's nice to have a collective voice to really discuss something. So I'm going to ask you a question now that I'd like everyone to kind of chime in on. Uh, the topic of the month has been black excellence in marriage. But when I say the phrase black excellence in marriage, what does that mean to you? It almost is um, a term that's that's hard to fit under, you know, when you say when you say marriage and excellence, that's mm -hmm. tough, right? Because there's there's some there's some struggle and there's some fight and there's some, you know, back and forth to to making that marriage happen. And the strive is to get to excellence, right? And we all want to be each other's um, best friend, which we are, and then we want to be that person that you know you need to lean on in that tough time. So um, we all fall short of that. So when you say black excellence, it's that's a that's a big term, excellence. You know, I like wow, it's like a big shadow that I'm hiding under. But um, to say excellence is definitely something that I strive for to to make it happen, and then to show other young black couples that um, it's possible. You know, it's possible. We, we're 22 years in, and it's it's definitely possible to make it happen. Um, putting yourself second and putting love first is 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 the biggest is the biggest thing. And so when I say that, it makes me feel like it's it's something that's you can accomplish. Um, 
it makes you feel like excellent is not so bad. It's not, it's not such a hard term when you think about it. And I think about God being love. And if I can remain in God and then um, I can achieve and, and strive for that excellent part. But initially, when you say black excellence in marriage, I'm like, oh, excellence. I am far from <laughs> trying to achieve, far from that excellent part, brother. Well, I just feel like if you strive for it, I mean, you don't, none of us are, are, are excellent at every point in any given time in our life, right? There's times where we adjust, there's times where we don't feel necessarily excellent. But if you strive towards excellence, then you will be a lot further than you would if you didn't. Um, and I always use this phrase when I'm talking to my friends who are either single or who want to be married or who are married and going through a rough time. And, you know, they, they're like, well, you always seem so happy. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's a choice. It's a choice. Right. And I have always said to myself, my marriage, when I became a mom, I decided to treat my marriage like my newborn. I would do anything for my newborn. I treated my babies with grace, with tenderness, with the most delicate hands. And I handle my marriage the same way. So if I can just remember to handle my marriage, like I handled that brand new baby, then I will never go wrong. Hold me, baby. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I'm going to force you. What, what about you guys, McDaniels? I, I wanted to say that was good, Taylor's. Um, that was real good. Um, I could work on taking that approach. There's room for improvement on being soft and gentle, even with my baby. So thank you for the <laughs> reminder. Um, I would say um, in regards to the, the term excellence in marriage, Black marriage, um, I would say in sync, not perfect, um, but just being in rhythm with one another, meaning we both have the same goal. Um, mm -hmm. And there's going to be some distractions along the way. We may even have a different agenda, but even if we are in sync with our intentions, um, that to me feels like uh, excellence. Yeah. Um, because we're in that process of constantly growing and evolving. Amen. I like that. Yeah, I would say uh, looking at it from a historical uh, lens that Black marriage is uh, a space where you have to endure. Uh, black families, Black marriage had to endure. Uh, slavery, emancipation, Jim Crow, Black codes, let's go on and on. So uh, there's when a black man, a black man says, "I'm committed to a black woman," you got to endure some things, uh, <laughs> and uh, and you have to realize that hey, you know, it's going to take some work and it's going to take some prayer. Um, but I think when you're committed to that, to that, to that oh. one person, um, that love says, "I'm going to endure these things that might come our way." So, um, so yeah, I think black excellence means I'm going to endure. Whatever comes our way, we're going to continue to, to fight the good fight. Oh, I got Dang, I didn't know it was that hard, y'all. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <that part. laughs> hey, struggle is real. Hey. <laughs> hey, 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 they say without a struggle, you can't get no progress. So you, you got to have some type of. Come on, Frederick Douglass, come on. There you go. You know, I'm sorry. It's Black History Month, so I had to come with you know, historical reference. So, I mean, it ain't easy. That's so funny. Right, every, everybody's not the. Uh, <laughs> I just forgot. Um, moving on up. The Jeffersons. The Jeffersons. Everybody's not the Jeffersons. Well, Weezy had a hard time with George, so <laughs> she sure did. <laughs> yeah, she kept the struggle real. She made sure of that. What about you, Mrs. Haynes? I don't know. I mean, those both are just so good. And I'm over here writing notes like, okay, you know what, Aaron? when I do talk to you, we're going to have to right, talk girl. to you. <laughs> but you know what just everybody has already said I think pretty much of what I think too you know black excellence it's such a broad term it's such a broad word excellence in itself um for us I feel like black excellence has is transparent I feel like it's transparent with us and that has with COVID and everything else, 
it's so easy to get lost into the day-to-day -day struggle. It's so easy to get lost into, you know, sweeping things, even small things underneath the rug and just moving on about your day. But I feel like through everything last year taught us was like, you know what, we need to stop sweeping things under the rug so much because eventually that stuff is going to pile up. And we've learned to just be transparent with each other, even if it might be small. Even if I joke about like the, the towel situation, because we had talked about that, about Aaron not finding the kitchen towels. I, that was in the middle. It's small, but like it was in the middle of everything else going on, homeschooling and Zoom, and that kind of escalated. And so it's just little things like that, just being transparent with each other and being open and honest and just knowing that we're all striving at the end of the day to have a successful happy, God-filled marriage. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. You're talking about striving, right? There's a standard by which a rubric, a metric that's thrown out there, that we threw out there, but yet there's, there's going to be setbacks. There's going to be some failures. I love failure. Some people shy away from that word, that phrase, but I think that if you're not failing, then you're not trying. If you're not mm -hmm. failing, then you're not moving forward. And I think the same is true when it comes to our relationships and marriage. And so I'd like to know what, what has a failure or a temporary setback in your marriage or how I should say, how has a failure or temporary setback in your marriage set you up for a bigger win or advancement in your relationship for later success? Anyway, I just want to throw this out there. While you're thinking about that, I just need to let our audience know that if you hear children screaming, <laughs> Using crying our <laughs> children are here and our, our sitters which happen to be our daughters have abandoned us and we're waiting for them to arrive mm -hmm. so your glass break is because our, uh, our our grandson isaiah um just can't be without us and decided to break through the barrier <laughs> um so I, I apologize so again just let me just recap the question is how has a failure or a temporary setback in, in your marriage set you up for a later success. Um, wow, that's that's um that's big. It's a uh, as a big big being on transparency, and if I'm not transparent, I can't um, expect other men to be transparent with me, right? Mm -hmm. So a big setback was uh, in August. Something happened with me medically where I don't know what it was. A lot of things started happening at one time. Daughter went to college. Um, it was time to homeschool. It was a lot of different things going on. And something happened to me where it was like anxiety, which I never experienced before in my life. A couple of days and my wife's like, you gotta get this checked out and see what's going on. Turned out it was anxiety. So um, that was a huge setback. My doctor, I talked to my doctor about it and he said, I'm taking you off work. You need to settle down. I work in the medical field. Um, you know, taking call 10, day, 10 days a month, 24 hour shifts. And it's just like, he's like, you need a break. You need to sit back and, and figure out what's going on. Sat back for a while, um, went through some, some counseling classes a couple, couple days a week, um, had the support of my wife, understanding what was going on, but also letting me work through it. And through that was, I was looking at it as a setback but actually it was more of a setup. My wife had been working at her home business for uh, a year prior because she wanted me to come home and be with the kids. And that and set, <laughs> <laughs> and that set back, what I thought was a huge setback turned out to be a downtime for me to um, connect with myself, connect with my wife, my kids, but most importantly, um, get my relationship with Christ right and be able to move forward in, in the goal that he has for me in my life. So it was a setback. And I was like, gosh, I'm, I don't know what this is. I felt weak. I felt down. I felt all of these things until I realized what the setback was, was a setup for our future to be together, to be with the kids, to, to open a men's ministry, to do all of these great things um, for, for the kingdom, you know, and, and it was just like, wow, it was, it was tough. <laughs> it was definitely a setback. I was like, why well, I have to go through all of this? 
Well, you and know, it was because I didn't listen. You know what I mean? Well, Just a, a, a long story short was probably a year and a half prior. God spoke to me and said, you probably won't be in this job for a year. That year came in June and I wasn't really letting go. I was holding on tight. And he said, OK, you keep holding on, but I'm going to drop this on you. And <laughs> it's going to be time for you to step out, whether you want to or not. I'm going to have you step away. So the setback is is was really. Well, it's, it's not a setback, right? Well, it, it was a time of transition for us <laughs> because, you know, my husband, who is so cool, calm and collected forever since junior prom, he was this different person and he was just all wound up. And I was like, look, you need to like use this time to check in with you. Who are you? Right. Like, who are you? And use this time to plug in. Like, I got you. I got this. I got this house. Like what you just need to like check in with yourself, figure out who you are and what is it that you want? Right. Like I'm clear on my path. I'm clear on I want to retire by this time. I want to work this amount of time. And this is why I'm doing this for us. I need you to get clear on who you are. So I'm allowing you this time to just unplug and do you and not worry about like how this is going to work out and how this is going to happen and what's going on, you know, but honestly, if he hadn't have gotten anxious or whatever, he'd still be We'd still be seeing each other four hours a week. We'd still be arguing over <laughs> who's on call and we overlapped and I'm on call and you're on call. Who's going to be home with the kids. That was such a, his job was such a, a, a like some it's caused so much strife in our life because it was so stressful for both of us to have these type of careers. And it just wasn't reasonable for me to like stop. Right. It just made more sense for him to stop. And it was something that we argued about. And I the, like the phone call to even make the call schedule would just be like this intense 25 minute phone call. And we would both just kind of not really talk to each other for a couple of days. Like, and <laughs> why is it that making a schedule can be such a stressful process? Because that was the issue right like we wanted the time together he's like this is what i gotta do i'm the man i gotta do this and i'm like no you don't but you know i had to let him work through that on his own but i also had to give him the space to say i got you work through you know figure out who you are and what it is that you want so it was a set back in the sense of i felt like i couldn't help him through it and i couldn't like i wanted to fix it for him but i couldn't i just had to let him sit in it and I had to kind of take what was on the receiving end of it at times even though I knew it wasn't directed at me or I couldn't fix him and it wasn't his personality I didn't get mad like stop it you know I just said let me let him work through whatever this is he needs to work through to kind of find himself again it was tough because I wanted it all I wanted ministry I wanted I wanted job I love my job I wanted kids I wanted to, I can I wanted to put myself in all these different places at once and it just wasn't possible so that that setback was like you said man it's, it was it was time for you know to mature me and, and to make me uh put me on this path today but also it was time for me to repay the favor i went to medical school we had two children and he allowed me to unplug and do what i needed to do to become a physician i didn't have to worry about anything i couldn't tell you where a sock was i couldn't tell you what day the kid needed to go to the pediatrician yes i birthed them i fed them i nurtured them but when it was time for me to go to school, he carried all of that. I couldn't even tell you who our cable provider was. Um, so it was my opportunity to allow him to kind of rediscover himself at, during a period of time where he allowed me to kind of have that space. And I needed him to know that that's okay, right? Take this time, but he had to be okay with it. And finally, month <laughs> seven, he is finally in the space where he's able to smile and laugh and appreciate the fact that he don't have to walk out of this door ever again and punch nobody's clock ever again. And that's okay. Amen. I love that. I love that. That's the come up right there. <laughs> Listeners, I hope you are, are really taking notes. If you're driving, pull over, jot down a few notes. If not, just put this on repeat. Make sure you're listening to it and make sure you tell your mama, your auntie, your cousin, everybody that they need to get on and listen to this podcast because these families are dropping nuggets. Anyone else? Yeah, I got a story. Uh, <laughs> just one? Yeah, I got a story. Um, so 2016, um, my wife and I are trying to, you know, build a, what, economic 
legacy wealth um, and get back to the homeowner um, space. And uh, so we agree to go ahead and make sure our credit's right and, you know, eliminate the debt and, you know, be approved for a loan. And my wife, you know, she's been doing the whole subdivision uh, in El Grove for a lot of years. And she's like, look, I'm tired of these, you know, these homes. No, no, no shade on El Grove, but, you know, I, I want to move to the country. I'm looking like, I don't know. So we go back and forth. I'm trying to be looking for homes. You know, we're on Redfin, we're on MLS, and we're looking at homes. And I like something in the in the urban space, and, and she ain't liking it, and vice versa. So it, it created a lot of tension in our marriage. We, you know, it would became a, a bickering, argumentative, and it just didn't go anywhere. For 10 years. Yeah, I, I, but 2016 was kind of like the because we're getting we're getting we're moving closer to the goal, right? So we had to find something, and you know we were renting for a long time. And uh, I said, you know what? I told her, I said, you know what, babe? I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of concede on this one. If you can find your country home, right? Uh, if you can find it, if it's in Sacramento County, so this is kind of like negotiated, you know, approach. If you can find your country home in Sac County. You go ahead and purchase it. I don't want. I don't want to see it because if I go and see it, I ain't gonna like it, and we back to square one. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you know it's on you, baby. Now, mind you, you know I don't profess men of faith, and I hear from the Lord, and so I'm like, Lord, you already know. If if I ain't got a revelation, we ain't getting no house. You know, I'm kind of like this self righteous. You know, if I ain't got the revelation, if I ain't got this, you know, this Joseph dream, then you know, we ain't getting this house, right? So the Lord probably said, back, oh, really? Okay. So I, I can't talk to your wife like I talk to you. Okay. All right. So anyway, fast forward it. Um, I'm on the road somewhere driving, heading home. My wife called me. Hey, babe, how you doing? She sounds excited. She's with her sister. What you doing? I'm, you know, with my sister. Uh, what, what's up? Huh, I found the house. I'm like, excuse me? Yeah, I found the house. I said, where is that? She said, it's in San County. I, said, I, can hear her, I can hear her sister saying, Monta, you want to see this house? I'm like, no, I don't want to see the house. She said, are you sure? I said, um, yeah, I'm really sure. And uh, my wife's like, you sure, babe? I said, baby, like I said, I don't want to see the house. If you can find it, cool. So fast forward, you know, so I'm at work and I'm looking like, man, should I go online? So I go online, look at the house. I'm like, I don't know. This is like, I go online, punching the address. I got a little, little kind of sweep through. I'm looking like, okay. So we're now we're in escrow, right? So I think, you know, 45 days. Mind you, he hasn't signed one document. I'm signing everything right. for him. Right. She's doing everything, pulling out money, right? <laughs> so again, I got a 45-day window for the Lord to go ahead and block this sale. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm thinking that's how it's going to work, right? I think that's how it's going to work. So, you know, um, I remember uh, clearly she came uh, to me and she says, I, uh, Monte, um, they approved the, um, the transaction. We're going to go ahead and go for signing. I'm thinking, so I need you to take a day off. Uh, and she know I like to work. I don't take too many days off. She's like, I need to take a day off. I'm like, take the day off? <laughs> the sign for a house I ain't seen yet? <laughs> right? And uh, I'm thinking like, Lord, you got to come through here now. I mean, you, <laughs> something got to happen with this with this loan. Some Something got to happen. So sure enough, uh, I sat there with my wife. Uh, I, I put on the, the smiley face. And I'm thinking like, I looked at the bottom line. I'm looking like, okay, I'm paying a lot of money for a house I ain't seen yet. And uh, went went through the escrow process, finding the house. And I'm like, I walked in the house. I'm like, what did I buy? You know, uh, the house needed a, a, a extra loan to get things up to speed. Um, but, you know, since then till now, um, we've done amazing work to the house. I uh, hope y'all can come out here. Uh, you know, in lieu of this COVID-19, but hope we can all have a gathering. But I'm really uh, appreciative and thankful that I didn't get in the way of what God was doing um, with our home. It's a beautiful home. My wife did an amazing job working with other contractors while I was at work, you know, grumbling and mumbling and you know, whatever. She was behind the scenes, orchestrating, making sure that um, we didn't, you know, we were going to live in a home that we can both enjoy. And so even though I wasn't a part of the initial vision, uh, she kept on and she said, look, this is how I want to live and for us to live. And the Lord allowed that time for me to kind of just to grow up 
and appreciate my wife and, and her, her role in this. And uh, I'm so grateful that I have a strong black woman uh, who can uh, envision uh, things that we cannot see. So uh, I'm very grateful for that. Uh, I, I take time now uh, during my week and I just walk the property uh, and I just look look at, you know, because again, I didn't know the significance of uh, not just owning a home, but owning land. So my wife taught me a lot about, you know, historically, you know, we as African-Americans are black folk. Uh, we, 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 we both had that 40 acres of mule. So I got, we got six and a half acres uh, we ain't got no meal yet, but we got six. Uh, so I'm very grateful to God. Seven. Well, yeah, yeah, seven. And so I'm just grateful. Uh, we've hosted uh, many events here um, since 2017. Uh, recently, we did a men's breakfast. Uh, we've hosted a funeral, um, a repass, excuse me, a repass. Uh, we've hosted many events, birthdays uh, for other families. And so we wanted our home or to be a space of refuge, space of healing. And we've done that. Um, what else? We raised our niece and nephew the last three years here. Um, their mom passed, and so we just adding to the to the to the to the ranch. So my wife is project base uh, <laughs> slash realtor. So she's she's adding more to the castle. So we've added additional uh, uh, a housing space. And so again, I'm just thankful I'm being part a part of the division. So it's initially for me was a kind of a setback, but see how the the come up, you know. So. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. May I, do I have time to share? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Go ahead. Yes. Um, I want to tag team with Monte. Um, that was a great example because um, it was a very long fight. It was a 10 year fight having to have went from having two homes to jumping into the, the rental market and him and I just fighting is fighting. He wants to be in Green Haven Land Park. I'm like, nah, I don't want no parts of it. And I was constantly fighting for my agenda and he was fighting for his agenda. And um, somewhere in the midst of that, what God did is he removed me from the fight. Like I really, really, really had to uh, be removed from the fight because nobody was winning, right? And we're just throwing money away and looking at the years going by all because we trying to make a point, right? As if we're fighting against one another. So I would say that it was when God removed me to stop fighting with my husband or provoking my husband as a strong black woman, right? Um, I could see a change in my husband's heart when I stopped fighting um, with him. And then I would say to answer your question, um, this, these, because that was just one really great example, but we've had so many hiccups in our marriage. You know, this is year 20 for us. We right behind y'all, Taylors. Um, <laughs> but this has been, um, there has been so many big things like that. But in the end, I can attest and say that it tested our resolve mm -hmm. for marriage, for love, and what this looks like about compromise. We're we didn't really have that coming in. We didn't have those tools coming in. We didn't have the Ranas and the Walkers to be that up close and personal. How do you do this? What is it supposed to look like? So if anything, I would say hiccups, mistakes, disappointments, failures, all of that, um, it tested our resolve. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I just want to come over and be an usher after the next. <laughs> I remember the podcast where everybody had a job at the church at the, at the, on the on the farm. I was like, man, maybe I can get over there and, and just just be the usher. <laughs> we, we might have a Wakanda party, you know what I'm saying? Man, we I'm hey. you know, uh, do a Wakanda style, yeah. 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 Now, that, maybe I'm you trying to figure out acres. if you thought it was six acres, maybe because you're trying to give one away or something. <laughs> Uh, sale part, you know, I just yeah, wasn't, sure. I, you know, I wish I had that kind of insurance, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> it did sound insurance. a little Freudian, right? There's a little slip, like you're trying to give a, I, I'm like, I'm not that far. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how this girl from Oakland starts clearing land. That's what I'm trying to figure yeah. But, but you know what you said something, um, Mr. Taylor, I, I want to highlight in marriage, um, language, right? Monte and I speak two different languages. He mm -hmm. says six, I say seven. It's neither. It's like 6.6 .6 acres or something like that, right? Um, but my language is, all I need to see is a little 
window and I'm going for it. His language is I'm awake, pray about it, think about it, right? We speak mm -hmm. different languages and we, we went with growth, I would say you learn to appreciate that texture that your spouse brings to. It's not that it's bad, but you gotta be in sync. There has to be some rhythm. Yeah, definitely. Um, this home we were in, I would have sold it three, four years ago. Cause I said, I want a tiny house because I just want to spend more time with you. And, and she said, no, that's, that's not what God has for us. Um, that's, that's the easy way out. And um, he's a provider. And what's going to happen is I'm going to start this other business and we're going to be okay. And I'm like, yeah, you're number one. I'm like, yeah, we're still in this situation a little yeah. bit, babe. Um, <laughs> still, you you want to put the sign out front? And she's like, nope. And, and now here we are three years later, I walk away from a six figure salary and and, and we have more than we ever had. More than we ever had. And it's like the obedience and trusting, you know, these strong black women. And I'm like him, like, Lord, you got to say something. Oh, he, was <laughs> um, he was mad. I mean, um, he the, would get really mad and I'm not like, talk to me about that. The bush ain't burning. <laughs> um, I don't see nothing happening. You got to like, Clo like you put the sign out there so she know because I'm not going to call nobody. But I would have an army of my friends and my sisters praying for me. Cause I would leave and say, this man is really on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I need some intercession <laughs> to deal with him because that is not what I, that is, God has not given me that. And the moment that I said, you know what? Okay, let's sell it. That's when everything changed. When I stopped fighting him, like you said, mm -hmm. and I was taken out of the fight and I said, you know what? Let's throw my hands up. And that's when everything changed. And then I couldn't sell it. I was like, are we good right now? Right. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is beautiful. And I, and I think that this is what it's about, coming together as a community and talking about, look, there's, there's a commonality in that story, in your stories, that we wouldn't have otherwise known. You think it's unique to something that you went through, that God just did that for you. Our God is a great God. You know, our God, <laughs> there's nothing God can accomplish, provided we decide to get out of the way. Yeah. Uh, and I, I just have to, and I want Kara to actually chime in and share hers as well. But I just, there's an opportunity here that I just want to throw out there. Yeah. You know, one of the things that you, you talked about was communication. He says six, you said seven, but it's really 6.6. .6. <laughs> and, and I think that communication is, is crucial. And, and one thing that we do in every one of our podcasts is make sure that we highlight the fact that Snooks and I offer a workshop every single month for free. And we pour resources into this workshop that we would generally charge some of our clients for. Um, we do a disc assessment that is extremely expensive. You know, I'm a certified intermetrics consultant. We use that. We do other things, but it's free. We give this because we're trying to pour into, you know, all couples from every background, socioeconomic backgrounds, diversity. We don't care who you are. We believe in marriage. However, God is serving that up. We want to serve you. And so take a moment to actually go to marriedinacrazy.com. Take a look at that button right there so you can come to the free workshop. So you can experience what the Taylors have. So you can experience what the McDaniels have, what you can experience you know, what, what Mrs. Haynes is about to talk about. <laughs> I want each and every one of you to have this. And it doesn't come from me. We're just a conduit. This is two, two couples do not know each other talking about how God was moving things. And I, I hate to say that when the men decide to shut up, but I, I, I will just <laughs> leave that there. Because I, I guess there's a lesson in there for me somewhere. I haven't quite figured out what God's trying to tell me. But so, Kara, you want to chime in? Yes, uh, it's so funny because you're talking about the common with all of us. And I bought, well, we bought our house without my husband even seeing it. <laughs> same thing, same exact thing. He, I wanted this house. I've wa I'd watched it for years. It was our first home. And He's like, I just don't know about going big our first time. Like we should buy maybe something smaller and work our way up. And I'm like, no, this is, this is our home. I, I prayed about it and it was on the market and then it never sold. They took it back off the market. I didn't know why, but they took it back off. And I said, you know, it just wasn't meant to be. And we kept looking, couldn't find the house. So we decided to stay into where we were staying before. Then I got pregnant. And it's like, okay, now we got to move. <laughs> now we have to move. And within four months of me being pregnant, the house came back on the market. And he, we were overseas and I ended up coming back 
to sign paperwork. And literally by the time he came home, he got off the plane and was like, I'm signing paperwork and I'm getting keys. Can I go see the house that we just bought? <laughs> and our realtor is like, you haven't seen the house. He's like, I've seen it online. I, I just trust my wife. I'm, uh, she says she prayed on it and that's good enough for me. I, I, I don't know if I'm crazy or he says, no, you're not crazy. You have a good wife. <laughs> So that, but you know what, um, what I was going to say is we had a situation, it was opposite of like the Taylors, where I have given up a lot in my career to travel, make sure that our family unit is together overseas. And this is the first time where everything stopped. My husband's season stopped in the middle of the season because of COVID and he is a very competitive person. Him and, uh, for example, him and Rana, they fight like brothers and sisters with playing games. They both are Aries and they both have to win at everything. And I, and me and Ernie are just like, you know what? Hey, <laughs> to each his own, but they, they go at it. And so that was hard for him in the middle of a season to just walk away. Um, and also when he walked away, he's not getting paid. So he is the, the breadwinner. So also around that time, I had quit a job that I had been in for 10 years that I hated. I absolutely hated. I ended up going to therapy because I had anxiety. The same, I had the same thing. I was just angry. I'm not an angry person at all. Um, but I just was finding my husband, Aaron. He was like, you know, you need to go talk to somebody. Because I, I, you're not, I'm not giving you what you need. You need to go talk to somebody. And I did, and I ended up going two times a week for six months. And the therapist was like, you need to leave. And I left in 20, the beginning of 2019. Was it, what is, I'm like, what year is this? 2020, I left <laughs> in the beginning of 2020. So I spent that whole year just trying to figure out what it is that I wanna do. And by God's grace is, end up finding a position in January of this, of last year, oh, no, this year, this year, I was like, what? <laughs> it all blurs together. So, um, here I was now I'm the breadwinner. Aaron isn't doing anything. And now he's taking on the role of getting our son ready for school. He's sitting now in the zoom classes, sessions, teaching him with things He's shuffling him around to play dates with other couples that are doing the same thing that we're doing while we're still trying to nurture our son and his social needs and everything else. And so this is something that is so out the box for him. He's used to train, 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 leave, you know, and then repeat, vacation, repeat, He's somebody that really thrives on structure. And this was, his structure was just completely thrown out the window. So that was very trying for our marriage because I'm trying to help him along the way, but it was hard for him um, to adjust. It was, and he would be very open about that also. Oh, especially in the gyms were closed. So where he would, he would have an outlet to going to shoot. That, that's what he always says. He says, basketball clears my mind. Like how, if you go to therapy, basketball is my therapy. And so that was gone too. So it just was, not in a good mental space for him. Um, but he powered through and we start praying together. We, it was so interesting. One of the things that we figured out, we used to pray together um, every night when we were dating, we would pray. And for some reason along the lines that got lost. We just, I don't know why it did, but it just, it, we just stopped doing, we didn't say we're not going to do it. We pray and we're very spiritual people, but we didn't, we stopped praying together. And then we brought that along again. And it's like things started, you know, God, you, you have God as your center mm -hmm. and it changed so much. And, and I, and I tell people too, it sounds very cliche and it's, it's not, but it, it sounds like it is, but it's true. It's so true. Like once you have him as your center, mm. everything else falls into place. And even though we might question things, as long as you have him in the center, things happen. And 
things have opened up and now my husband is back in Korea doing what it is that he loves for a short period of time right now. And our son is back in school. So it's like things are starting to kind of pick up and move and everyone seems content, but change content, but change. Uh, she is she is competitive because we're fighting over who's going to get to ask the next question. So oh, well, no. uh, we are because my question <laughs> actually piggybacks on what all of y'all were talking yeah, so about. Does mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -uh, go. Only because I'll let you go because Ms. Haynes just talked about and each of you have you've touched upon kind of like routines and rituals, some that were disrupted, finding new ones, rediscovering, getting reacquainted with. And I want to ask you know so what is a ritual that you and your spouse share that has survived or come to the forefront during COVID and now as we're moving hopefully out of this whole pandemic? I got one. Go ahead. Don't eat any food from any of your female coworkers. So <laughs> they prepare any food, you do not get to partake and he needs to come home every night. Other than that, I don't care what else go on. <laughs> That it has worked for us. <laughs> but, I'm, I'm not, serious. I'm not to follow that one up, but anyway. <laughs> the question was uh, rhythm. Or something. <laughs> I, I, I'm just thrown off. I, but, uh, you know, I, I feel like you know, kind of the idea of making time, being intentional. Um, I know we can. We've been, you know, together for 20 years now. So, you know, I told my wife a while ago, I said, I want to date you again, you know, and, you know, that in itself is, it can be a challenge because you got kids, they're older and you guys, you know, with COVID, you can't really go too many places. So uh, we do have space here on the ranch. So um, I've been trying to get creative. Um, my wife loves uh, the idea that I'm planning uh, I'm not asking her what she wants to do, but I'm actually taking initiative in planning. So I'm um, mm -hmm. just trying to make sure to me, if I cherish her and, you know, it might be a foot massage, a head massage, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, work these hands somewhere on a muscle tissue. I think that, I, uh, yes, um, that's true. That's true. So I think yeah. for me, for us, as I said, quality time, knowing her love language, being able to speak that uh, clearly and consistently for us is working. I love agree it. with you. <laughs> I love that. I'll go. Oh, you go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. You go ahead. You, you go first. <laughs> it, it'll be real quick because it's one sided, but uh, <laughs> 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 what worked for me <laughs> was just we used to have date nights every Friday. That used to be our thing, whether it's going bowling pretty much any, anything outside the house, bowling, uh, to the movies, dinner. Of course, none of that was happening last year. So um, what would happen is like my mom or my sister would take our son and we would have like dinner out in the patio or we might go for a drive. And it just was so, and I think Aaron was understanding my love language because I just needed to get out the house. I don't need, and, and I also needed to get out and I needed to not plan something. So, yeah, yeah. so once Aaron discovered DoorDash, <laughs> 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 it was like, I got this. So that opened up a whole lot, but no, that was, that was a change that we noticed it. And if we weren't getting it every Friday, like how we were used to, but at least once a month, it was just nice to know, like, we have the space to do what it is that we want to do, whether it's here at the house in our backyard or just going for a drive is nice. I would agree. I would say for, for me, I definitely love date night. Like that's really important to me. Um, and just, it doesn't have to be anything. And that's what I needed him to understand was I just want you, right? It could be anything simple, um, I just want your undivided attention. But I think a big one for me is I like to exercise so that when he started exercising with me and we started exercising together, it was really good um, time together. We Before COVID, we would go to the gym together. We'd get up, 
he would wake me up or put my socks on my feet. So it was just, you know, pull me out of the bed. Like, we got to go, we got to go. So it was time for us to bond, time for us to talk before our day got started, time for us to work out together and then have that quality time. And then when COVID happened, we didn't get that because the gyms were closed and we kind of lost our way a little bit. Um, but we were able to kind of recapture some of that by exercising outside. And now we have a Peloton bike. And so we're able to kind of do some of that together. So I would say date night in a sense of anything, but for us, the main thing was exercising together, but also just being, for me, being intentional with having at least that one day a week, that's just hours with undivided time. Mm-hmm. We yeah, on the Peloton boyfriend. too. Oh, yeah. What's your name? <laughs> you got my boyfriend. 4.30 a.m. doing Peloton. <laughs> He's hooked. He's hooked. Yeah. yeah, I did probably three. I think I did three rides in within uh, probably 36 hours. I was like, I got to get on again. Yeah, he's hooked. <laughs> it was short 20-minute rides. But, yeah, it, it was – I think I did a ride at 4.30 in the morning. And then by 1.30 in the afternoon, I was on again. But um, I saw you had posted – um. I think you got, um, you did that one, the sister with the hip hop. Yeah. Oh, yes. I like yes. her. Yeah, I, I did one of her rides the other day. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I got a wannabe Peloton, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but, you know, okay, I, I will say that for us, I mean, when it comes to routine, um, something that we discovered over the course of the last year, well, I know what it is. Do you know what it is? Our routine? He starts praying together? That's the one. Every single morning, and it's, it's generally during the week, every single weekday for sure, five days a week minimum. I know that. And if we don't, if we're in sync in the morning, sometimes she's sleeping, I just don't want to wake her up um, on the weekend. But every day during the week, if I'm, she gets up before me, so I know I'm lying in bed and she might walk over before she goes downstairs and she'll nudge me and she'll just hold my hand. I'll sit there and, and we pray together every single morning. And, and that's our ritual. And it just, I don't know what it's like to go without that during the week because it's it's so ingrained now. And I think that's extremely yeah. important. That's good. Mm-hmm. He has another ritual, telling us what to do at home. So, and it's been working for me. That's what we said. That's de- Dad's favorite things. Tell us what to do. So. <laughs> God said that he's in charge. He's the owner. I get to be the foreman. Don't say that. <laughs> you just are the pastor of your home. <laughs> yeah, the pastor, not the boss. <laughs> what, what was your question? No, I'm going to do that last. Okay, so I do want to ask, though, what would you, okay, where you are now in the space that you're in, what would you tell your newlywed selves? Hmm, I can... No, I'm, I'm, I'm the newest one. I mean, we've been married. This is nine years. We've known each other for 20, but we've been married for nine years. So I've been taking notes from uh, the seasoned married <laughs> couples. But um, if I, I jumped on this because I told Aaron this probably last week, him and I were talking about just where we're at space-wise in our marriage personally and together, of course, but um, if I could tell my newlywed self now, it would be that everything doesn't have to be perfect. I don't have to get up every morning and just go. I can allow myself that couple minutes to center myself and it's okay to put myself sometimes in front of my husband. Now, I usually do, but I, I've noticed that I take away chunks of myself sometimes when I do it too much. And I need, Aaron does know now, but like it took time for him to recognize, hey, you you need to put yourself first, you know? And I think that that is probably the first thing that I would have told myself. I've gotten there now, but it's taken, it's not anything that anyone can tell you. It just takes time and experience for you to, to do that. I agree with that. That's, I'm, I'm a really more of a, a selfless person and it has taken a long time for me to say it's, you know, me time or it's my time because I'm, you know, I watch my dad just go to work and, and just like, so to speak, bring home the bacon. And my mom did all of the balancing of the checkbook and the shopping and everything. 
and I am more like my mom. So I was just like, I am just going to take care of my wife, whatever that means. I'm going to do that. And during that process, sometimes I, I lost myself. Mm-hmm. So um, I completely identify with, with what you're saying on that. And it, it resonates with me because I would tell myself to take time for yourself and um, find out some of the things that you really love and don't lose those things, no matter how many kids you have, no matter how many hours you work, find time to do those things that, you know, really bring you joy and don't lose them. Um, so that was, that was, um, that was something that I would, I would tell myself. And then the other thing that I would say was with, um, with the three things that damage a marriage would be money, uh, sex, and then personality like power. And I would tell myself to, um, relax, <laughs> just, just, just relax, you know, all those things that play, play a part in marriage, just, just take your time because, um, don't let them, they're, they're not bigger than the relationship. They're a part of the relationship. Mm-hmm. So that's what I would tell my, my younger self. I would tell my newlywed self to don't sweat the small stuff. Like I, like, you know, Kara said, it doesn't have to be perfect. And because I am a naturally very driven person and I'm so used to things being a certain way, it was very hard for me, even though we were very young when we got married, I have been like this forever. And it was very hard for me to um, be flexible enough to allow him space to be him and not try to make him like me because I married him because he wasn't me. But yet when we got married, I wanted him to be exactly the way I wanted him to be and do exactly the things that I wanted him to do. So I would tell my younger self to embrace the differences, to allow yourself to be you and to love those qualities throughout your marriage, because what attracted you to him will sometimes make you irritated later because you lose your way because you want them to be like you. And so just allowing each other to be yourselves and not sweating the small stuff. There's so many things that if I could just go back and just (laughs) think why were you so upset about that? Pray you know? for me, y'all. Pray so, for me. I got some damage. Um, but you know, <laughs> it's just it's control of wanting your world so regulated and so predictable. Um, so I would just tell my younger self to chill. That's interesting you say that. Because it, I mean, she's a she's a type A personality where it's like she wants everything to be, you know, a certain way. You know? And I am complete opposite. The complete opposite. I, I'll, I'll wake up and be like, yeah, let's let's not go to work and let's get on the plane and go to LA. I mean, she's like, well, I mean, we got work. Like, you could call in sick or what? I'm like, that, let's just go. Like, what are you worried about? Let's do something. She's like, I don't know. I got like a lot of patients to see at the office and, and I got a surgery to do. And I'm like, yeah, that's why you got to practice. Somebody's going to do that for you. And she's like, no. And I'm like, okay. And if I wasn't, if it was my girlfriend, I'd be like, okay, I'll see you later. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I would adopt a lot of him. He's a very free spirited person. So he definitely is my calm. Like I, this man was designed for me because I don't, and, and not too many people could deal with me, um, but he was designed for me because he is my calm. And so um, I would, embrace that a lot earlier in my marriage because it's really what truly makes me love him is because he is he's that calm and he's that flexible person he's that free spirit that you know that everyone loves yet I'm like right do things the way I say be be calm and be free spirited on my schedule right but it doesn't work that way so I would definitely enjoy that as a younger earlier bride more than I did. I don't know. I see Erica down there nodding her head like she's gonna break something. No, it's it's good. I feel like it's speak I feel like I should be sending y'all a co-payment for this good therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. And and some of the stuff um Aisha is Aisha? Uh-huh. It's Aisha some yeah. Stuff that you just spoke into your husband, spoke into your marriage. 
uh, Monte and I, we had um, a staff meeting here at the barn last night. And some of the things that you share resonated with what I spoke into my husband in front of our team. Um, so that's why I'm like, man, this is good. This is good. Um, because I have, um, and just listening to you, I see a lot of similarities between the both of you, which uh, I'm pointing over here. I'm like, oh, that's me. You know? <laughs> right? But and I don't know how many more questions, uh, cousins, y'all got for us tonight, uh, today, but out of all the questions, I was ready, like, you know, ready to hit the buzzer. My turn, right? Family feud. But this one, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I really can't think. Like, I really can't think. And then I'm like, oh, that's how you know you got a problem, right? There's nothing <laughs> for you to, to work on. So I'm going to have to go get some counseling about that. But um, I think the response, if I was to be true, honest, because um, I don't know another way to be. Um, I struggle with being vulnerable. I, I just, I operate always on 10, right? I'm, I'm waiting, I'm ready. Um, and so when uh, God brought Monte and I together, I didn't trust him. I don't trust nobody, and I sure don't trust no men. I kind of trust you now. But that's my default. I don't trust nobody, not man, nobody, right? And so, um, and I still struggle with releasing um, if you have it control. I don't even call it control, but if that's power, whatever you want to say. Um, and if I, one thing I learned in this marriage about my husband that I can trust him. I can, I can just, I can just trust him. Not perfect, but I can trust him. So if, if there was something that I would do 20 years ago, and I don't even know how it would happen because I'm just so hardwired, I would want to be able to experience relationship with my husband where I was in sus, you know, like what, what he up to, what, who, you know, I don't like your people, right? What's that about? You going to do what you, you know what I mean? Just that's how my mind operates. And so I would like to believe that if we could go back, um, I could experience something different where I wasn't always on 10, just waiting like, oh, you want a divorce? Good. Me too. I mean, just wait. But can you imagine operating like that all the time? Like even when things is good, you're on romantic dinner, you're just waiting for something bad to happen. Oh, I was waiting for that anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not being vulnerable to just experience someone loving you, not yes. hurting you, but just loving you. That's just too much like, ooh, uh-uh. You ain't about to catch me off guard, right? And so um, I'm getting better. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> You was just real vulnerable right there. That is that, that I'm 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 that's that's huge. I mean you just you just opened up right there. That's a that's another podcast right there. <laughs> but my, my struggle is not being transparent. I can keep it real, but I'm talking about truly change in my heart and in this mind. That's the hard part, right? I know right from wrong. I can sit up here and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd be like, mm-mm. You know? <laughs> right. yeah. Thank good. you. Um, yeah. I uh, appreciate that, dear. appreciate that. Um, so I'm getting my, uh, you know, 20, what, four? It's 24? 23. 23? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so he like, was a baby. I'm like, hey, uh, hey, bro, check it out, man. You need to uh, hold on to this one. You know, make sure that, you know, uh, this right here is someone is it has your best interest at heart. Um, you know, watch my parents. You know, um, be married now. Well, the time they're going on what twenty plus years as well. So I, I had a, a a a picture of what it what it could look like. Um, my parents obviously they endured some struggles, but I had a picture going in what family looks like, typically black family looks like growing up. So. Um, I knew that working, like my dad's a great work ethic. And so I had that instilled in me. And so I, I want to be a provider for my wife, but I, I thought that I couldn't really relinquish some of the stuff that, you know, most men are supposed to do. So I had this idea of like identity, you know, uh, who I am outside of work. 
And uh, so I would tell my younger self, like, hey, you can, you can uh, give yourself to this woman. You can be, like you said, be vulnerable enough to, so she can see into you. Um, and it was a, a, a time where, you know, the, the job was secure, but at a point I had, I had to really, I was going through some scrutiny at my job and I had to really be vulnerable. And uh, so I, I'm so thankful that during that time, she was able to, we were able to communicate and talk. I went to therapy, I was going to deal with anxiety as well. <laughs> and so, uh, because of the screening at my job, and, and um, but I would tell my tell your younger self, like, hey, you know, this is a good woman. Uh, she has your best interests at heart. Um, and you can actually relinquish some of those, like, because I'm a type of person, like, don't worry, I'll do it. If, you know, I, I'm going to do it to get it done. I, you know, I ain't going to, you know, trust because you might do it and then you do it you're doing it wrong and then we're back at stage one so the fact that i can you know not delegate but actually you know she completes me um so that's one side of it. the other side of it is because um even at 23 i would i had this ministerial calling but i it, i had a legalistic framework um and so uh, i would tell my younger self um look man um she's gonna help you see god in a unique way She's going to help you grow spiritually more than you actually reading the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Actually, she's going to be your grace in motion. Um, she's going to really help you see areas in your life where you lack. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I would tell men uh, now, but I'll tell myself, then I say, uh, actually, she's going to be a mirror, a mirror of areas in life where you're not like Jesus. So um, for me, she, she, she would be my, you know, my grace and mercy so she's grace and mercy and so um she's she's been that that backbone ever since so i would tell myself that. well all right i didn't know that i like the way that sound <laughs> i feel like i'm supposed to be putting some, like if i could pass a virtual uh uh collection plate around i i mean <laughs> I feel like i'm supposed to be I, i'll give you the cash up information in a minute i'll give you a cash up information in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's donation right. <laughs> blessings, blessings upon blessings upon awesome. blessings. I can't thank you guys enough for making time out of, out of your schedules to really not just be here with us, but this podcast is listened to in 33 countries. We, we got a an email the other day, or actually I should say it was like a, it should have been an email, but it was a long response um, from a woman to our YouTube page in response to an interview we did with a couple um, back in episode 108. And Right. When you read, I, I highly recommend going back and actually I'm going to read this to you. And this isn't about just us. It's about meaning like the podcast. It's about what you're doing right now. I have it hanging on the wall. So she's from um, what's South Africa, South Africa. Yeah, she's from South Africa. And so and this is a testimony to each and every one of you. And she says um, her name's Linda. She says, so happy to have found this page all the way from South Africa. I'm married seven years and it's not always easy. I'm constantly challenged in many aspects of my own marriage and I'm growing so very much just listening and attempting to apply lessons from this page. Let me also appreciate, she talks about this particular interview. Uh, let me also appreciate how Joey doesn't in his own experience of his first marriage slander his wife, nor does Tina become the new wife who it seems creates a wedge between Joey and his ex. Married in a Crazy resonates for so very resonates so very much to me and may your good work reach many to improve the quality of all our marriages. So, and I share that not to lift up married into crazy. It's about what she was learning from another couple. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing right now is pouring into somebody in some country that you have no idea whose heart you're going to touch. Your experiences that you talked about God's grace, you're acting as a conduit through which God's grace is touching other human beings in a, in a pandemic society where we can't touch physically other human beings. You are touching souls. You are touching hearts. You're touching spirits. And I can't thank you enough for what you're doing. And so I, I know Snooks has another question. No, it's just funny because you said Lovey's is like, oh, in other countries. I'm like, um, they touching us and we just engulfed, you know? So right. <laughs> we 20 minutes away. So I, I'm like, he, just piggybacking on what he said. I am, um, I appreciate you all, all of you guys. I really do. Um, our Iron Tribe is about 
other couples, you know, it's just not like he, it's not just about us. It's about other couples. And it, we've been married for 24 years and, but we still learn from other people from the nine years, from the 22 years, from the 20 years, we still learn. It doesn't, learning doesn't have um, a limit. There's no certain numbers like, oh, I've been married 40 years. I know everything. I mean, and there are unfortunately people that really think that y'all can't tell me nothing. Not. We've been married for, it's like, okay, you know, we, that, that's good. That's you. But we know that growing continues as you, as long as you live, you should be learning. You should be continuing to grow. So um, I appreciate you all too. And I, I have one more question. I just want to, um, I, I want to ask and, Lovey said that his question was really about what y'all just talked about. Mine was more on that. So it was about the come up. <laughs> we We're not competitive. <laughs> I'm just saying. So as, as you all know, you know, our story is year four. Um, that was our, that was our flat line basically. And what happened after that, you know, that was, that was the down part of our marriage. So we were ready for divorce. I was ready for divorce and we were, we, the tow truck was rented, whatever. He was moving out the next day. Then I lost my job. And so we stayed. Not, not, I didn't stay because I wanted to. I stayed because my husband said, my family comes before your selfishness or whatever. He didn't say those words, but he might as well had. But he's like, no, I'm going to make sure that my family is taken care of. <laughs> I'm going to make sure my family is taken care of before I move out. And so during the process, that month that it took for me to find a job and everything, we stayed together. And it was, that's when the work began. That's when, in all honesty, that's when Married Into Crazy was really, really born. We may not have had a podcast come out until 2018, but um, 2001, that's when Married Into Crazy was really born because we learned how to, the acronyms, we learned how to be compassionate. We learned how to be real. We learned accountability. We learned how to be zealous and we also learned how to be yielding. So with that being said, compassion, real, accountable, zealous, yielding, which of those, or, or just pick one, which is the, either the hardest for you to do or the easiest for you, to, for you to do? What are the choices again? Compassion and yielding and what? Compassion, real, accountable, yielding, zealous and yielding, sorry. Oh, it's crazy, is the, is the acronym. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Crazy, baby. Crazy. Over there. I'm going to give y'all I little... thought it was crazy because y'all really are crazy, <laughs> but okay. Sometimes it really well, is that. <laughs> that's how it started, but God said, let me let me, let me me put a little twist oh, on it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Acronym. Okay. okay. That's, that's what it is. We're, we're married into crazy. We're married into compassion, into being real, to being accountable, to being zealous and yielding. So that's what really it stands for. And that's what we learned in year four, moving on so, from that. In, in Monte and I's case, I'm going to ask if Monte, if he would be in agreement to where we can pick an acronym that would describe our, our each other. Is that okay instead of ourselves? Well, I'm just going to answer the question. You know, I, well, pick one. <laughs> I want you to pick it for me and I want to pick it for you because I think we'll get more of an authentic opportunity for growth. What's the question again? Amen. <laughs> Okay, so crazy. The acronym is compassionate, real, accountable, zealous, and yielding. Within that acronym, within that those four, those five pillars of crazy, which one is the easiest? Or the hardest for you to do, or for you to be? I think I think for my wife, she she mentioned earlier that the whole idea of like trusting, yielding. Um, so I think that might be her hardest. Mm -hmm. I think she's growing into. It. Being able to yield more of herself to me. I can take it. That's good. No, it's, it's good. I can take it. Um, I'm gonna stick with the same theme of the hardest. Um, I think though my husband is a man of God, um, many intersections where there has been conflict is I feel that he has lacked compassion, especially early on. Um, his focus, um, a lot like you, Derek, just your house, making sure everything is good with your family. And I'm an extension of many different people's families. So I bring drama just by way of being in proximity. Yeah, come on. <clears throat> and um, he doesn't, he's not, he is not wired 
that way. You know, he go to work, he take care of his family. He ain't got time for all of that stuff I'm bringing in. And so over the years, I would say I see improvements. I still have to remind him softly or just pray about it and leave him alone. Uh, but compassion is something that I would say has been hard for him um, from the, the my frame of how I look at compassion. Nice. That's good. Nice. I like that. Hmm. Who's up? They look at each other. <laughs> Somebody go. Go ahead, Taylors. <laughs> <laughs> well, yours is one sided, so go ahead, Jim. Okay, I'll go. I would say for me, the easiest would be compassion because he's taught me how to be compassionate. He's taught me how to slow down to speed up. And so le I've learned that from him. And I would say maybe the hardest, what's, what's the A? Accountability. Accountability, no. Um, maybe yielding. That's the hardest for me <laughs> is yielding. Yeah. I would, I would agree. It's, it's a struggle, but I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting better, um, but it is a struggle. <laughs> so for me, compassion is, is, um, that's an easy one for me. That, that one's yeah. simple. Um, just, just the way I'm wired. Um, the hard part is the A, accountability. And that's because you know, you want to be so compassionate and you want to be so caring and take care of everybody, you forget to hold yourself accountable. And in hold, not holding yourself accountable, you, you can start to lose um, the conversation and the closeness with your wife from, from, you know, hiding or protecting her from certain situations, you're not being accountable. So that would be the hard part. So compassionate is easy but it's, um, it's almost to a fault to where it, it makes me be less accountable. Mm. I would agree with that. Um, I'd say compassion for me is easy. Um, yielding is hard because I like to, I think based off of everything that I've been hearing, I think a lot of us, especially the, the wives, we, you know, we know, we, we, and we cherish our husbands and, and how they hold the house down. I would say it even with Aaron here too. He's somebody, he holds the house down. As long as his family is good, then that's all that matters. Um, but it takes me to take a step back and let him. My dad used to always say, Kara, let that boy be the man. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he's like, we raised you and your sister to be strong, independent women, you know, and not to rely on that. But when you find that right one, you need to yield and you need to fall back. And I'm like, yeah, you know, but I, I could do it better or, <laughs> or, or I, I can do it right. And, um, you know, I've, I've just, it's hard, but I've learned like care, just fall back, let him let him lead, let him do his thing. He's going to get there. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's you, know, you know, the podcast is in Korea too, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, you look for the comments. He'll comment underneath. He's the, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That's funny. That's beautiful. Well, look, we thank each and every one of you. And, and like we do at the end of every single podcast, we like to end it with I can can. You've, you've each experienced this to a certain extent. And yes, we're still doing it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pull from the I can can right now. Um, and it's just an affirmation for each of us to really focus on for the remainder of this upcoming week. So I'm going to pull one. And she's, gonna, oh, she's getting happy. I don't know if I like hers. <laughs> I'm going to pull wow. one. Wow. Okay. There's no trust in this house. You go first. <laughs> God is just messing with me. Mine says, uh, okay, this is for the fellas. <laughs> I can pick up after myself. Oh, Lord. Bro, come on, man. I know, I said, God, that's, a, bro. that's my weakness. That's for us. I can, I can cook. No. I, I can take care of the kids. 
That was for I, us. I can pray for the family. I can do everything. I need him to pray it's, a little less and a little bit more picking up. <laughs> <laughs> a little less cooking, a little more picking. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know what? Then it's divine. It is divine. God knows my heart. I am, <laughs> I am his daughter. Okay. My father wants what's best for me and my <laughs> head space. <laughs> Okay. I'm a, I'll pick it up, but I, that means I can't cook that much. Hey, I, I'll take I'll You're take it for starve. the team. No, I'll take it for the team. <laughs> and then here's what I do. You said accountability, right? You picked accountability, Derek, right? I will hold so you accountable. We'll be accountable. So on Wednesday, I'm gonna check in with you about whether or not you and I are picking up after ourselves. Oh, I'm high fiving you. Right, I need those pants on the side of the bed because if something happened, I got to put them on. He always can... says that. We've been married 22 years. Nothing's happened. What's happening? I'm getting ready. Stay ready. So you... Stay ready so you don't have to get it. That's what I'm talking about. I need a pair of sweats and a pair of pants. That's all I'm saying. But anyway. Yeah. What about the socks on the mantle? What do you need those for? Oh, <laughs> dumb. See? That's I thought it was just Aaron. Aaron's the same way with his sweats. And I'm always tripping off of like over him. I'm like, why do you need him here? You got to stay ready. For what? No, no. I'm still trying to figure it out. I don't know what we're ready because, for. Because in the middle of the night, you don't get up with the kids. You don't get up with the dog. You don't then you say, just the other night, my daughter's walking up the stairs at like two in the morning because she fell asleep on the couch and the dog goes nuts. And she's like, get up, get something's going on. I was like, like this. Oh, right. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, you know, the, there's nothing really going on, right? The alarm hasn't gone off, so nobody's in the house, not even tripping. But my pants are there, so I, I, I'm ready. Okay, <laughs> one time in 22 years, he's ready. Oh, but he's still walked out with no pants. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> he's done it. Put the pants on. <laughs> <laughs> Good, man, you you had the one. All you had was one job. Right, so we could just because because the alarm didn't go off, so I knew I was good. It was just the dog saying somebody coming up the stairs. Oh goodness! Lovey well, okay. has a, a dress caddy. Is it a dress caddy? Yeah, it's, a not dress. dress. It's, not, it's, a, it's, a it's a caddy, caddy for his clothes, jacket, shirt, mm -hmm. pants, and, and so. At any point, I will find five pair of socks, dress socks, down with his shoes, like two or three pair of other pants and the other shirt thrown over. So I'm like, babe, what, what's going on right here? He got mad at me. This was a couple of years ago. I took his socks and I threw them in the dirty clothes. Why you do that? Because they're dirty? You already wore them? Well, uh, my socks, he just goes on block. Uh, mm -mm. You have a thousand pair of socks. He actually could own a sock store. For all the socks that he has, they don't all fit in the drawer. He has like two drawers, one full of dress socks that I still can't put everything in. And then the other one are the workout socks. We don't need all that stuff. So I'm just saying. I mean, you kind of do though. No, you don't. You okay. kind of don't. <laughs> kind of don't. I'm you sorry. know what? You know. Your mic is off. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Turn my mic off. You do not touch another man's mic. <laughs> I gotta read mine. Okay, read yours, read yours, go ahead. Okay, so mine says, I can take my partner on a date. I like that one, hold on, wait a minute. So I, I, I already got something planned, so I'm excited about it. I can take my partner on a date. That one's for the ladies. Nice. <laughs> the date to the kitchen to wash the dishes. No, I'm playing. <laughs> hey. I'm kidding. But for those of you that are listening right now, um, I hope you got a lot of enjoyment. I hope you picked up a lot of nuggets. Yeah. Um, take a moment, go back and listen. There's, there's, listen to it several times. You'll be surprised how many times by listening to this one chalk filled podcast, you're going to get something different every single time that you listen to it. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to end the way that we have been for the greater part of the last year. And that is the next eight minutes and 46 seconds of this podcast will be absolute silence. And it's an opportunity for you, whether you're driving, working in the garden, um, whatever it is you're doing, take these next eight minutes and 46 seconds that are very significant and are choosing of the time to think about how you can be a better citizen, how you can be a better representative of God's love, how you can be a better husband, a better wife, a brother, sister, a better brother, a better whatever. So that way you can make everyone around you that much safer, that much more loved, and, and create a, a strong, good environment. We don't say any names only because when we do, someone's always left out. Mm -hmm. 
For the next eight minutes and 46 seconds, take a moment to reflect. It might be the only opportunity you get to reflect with silence for this week. So do that. And so until the next time, be blessed. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. We had a good time. Wait, hold on. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm going to have to actually, uh, I did something. There we go. I should probably stop the recording.